Hey y'all, I've got a great exercise for all those major scales we were talking about in the last video. Stay tuned. Hello friends and neighbors, I hope you're well. My name is Rich Brown, welcome back to the Brownstone. Thank you for being here, I know it's been a while. I'll try not to leave you hanging for as long uh, before the next video. Needless to say, things have been busy. But listen, today I want to talk to you about a really great exercise um, to do with the major scales. And you can do it to a metronome and you can play it as fast or as slow as you want or as you can or, or whatever you feel. Um, but it's going to involve, today it's going to involve the C major scale. C major scale, simple. And I'm just going to use the old 2 4, 1 2 4. One, three, four um, shape. So this is what it's going to involve. We're just going to play through the scale, but what we're going to do is we're going to play a particular sequence. And we'll play that sequence ascending and descending. So I'll start you off with a preliminary exercise that will lead you up to what will eventually be a very cool and very hip major scale exercise that you will all love. All right. Starts like this. So if I'm just playing through the C major scale, there I've got all the notes. Um, so the first thing that I want to do to lead up to uh, this sequence, this exercise, is to play um, and approach each of my targeted notes from a scale tone above, right? So if I'm playing the root note, then I'll start from the two and then go back to the one. So what happens is I get this ascending pattern. Right? And then I can do the same thing coming down. So instead of playing from a note above, I will approach each note of the scale from one scale tone below. So if I'm playing the root, I will approach that root from the seventh. And then go sixth to seventh, fifth to sixth, fourth to fifth, third to fourth, second to third, root to second, and then seventh below the root to the one. So that exercise or that preliminary exercise, we're only getting started here, uh, sounds like this. Uh, okay, so that's the first part of the exercise. Now, once you're comfortable with that, what I want you to do is add uh, a scale tone below your targeted note. That means if I'm doing the same exercise again, what I'll do is I'll play, if I'm starting from the root, which I normally do, I'll play the second and then go down a note, a scale tone below my target, which is the root, and then play the root. So I get two to the seventh, then to the root to the root and then I'll do the same thing and move on through the scale so if my next note is going to be the two which is very obvious I will play a note above the two a note below the two and then the two and then I'll go a note above the three so I go four two three five three four six four five Seven, five, six, eight, six, seven, nine, seven, eight, or one. So that's the exercise. That's the ascending part of, um, of our exercise. 
Next thing would be to learn the descending section of this phrase, which we will apply the same principle. So as we were coming down the scale, what we did was we approached each of those targeted notes from a note below. This is on the descending pattern. So now what we'll do is we'll approach from a note below. There's our targeted note, that's our C, the root note. So we've got a note below and then a note above and then our target. So we'll do this and take this through the scale. So if I have um, seven, nine, eight, the next phrase is going to be six, eight, seven, five, seven, six, four, six, five, three, five, four, two, four, three, one, three, two, and then seven, two, one. So if I play the entire exercise, it goes as follows. Okay, so that's the first part of our exercise. Um, that's the basic principle that we're going to follow through this thing. But here's where things get super hip. Because you know on this channel, things always get super hip. Huh? So this is what's going to happen now. We've got three notes moving through in this sequence. But what's happening is, is I'm leaving a space just to really sort of define what's happening with our sequence. So you can think of it as quarter notes or eighth notes or sixteenth notes, however you want to think of it. But what, I, what I've been playing is uh, three notes and then leaving the fourth note as a, a rest. So if I'm counting one, two, uh, sorry, that's the sequence. So it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. Um, but now what I want to do is I want to maintain whatever grid I might be thinking of, whether it's uh, quarters or eighths or sixteenths, and then take away the rests. So we have this three note sequence, three notes being laid out across um, kind of a four note grid, right? If we're counting in eighths or sixteenths, let's say eighth notes. Um, and I will do this to a metronome. Anna 1 is back. The return of Anna 1. And um, right now she's set to 90 BPM. And I have beats 1 and 3 turned off as I normally do. Um, so then if I think about the eighth note on that grid, help us out, Anna. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. You know what? That's going to be kind of fast. Let me slow that down a little bit. That's 90 BPM. I'm going to bring this down to, let's say, 70, which is here, right? One and two and three and four and. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to play the same sequence and leave out the rests so that our three note pattern just sort of runs across the bar line and creates these beautiful sort of accents that we can uh, learn and learn from and adapt to and uh, add to our vocabulary. So check it out. Same sequence. One, two, three, no rests.
hear how cool that pattern is. As it moves through the bar, um, the accents sort of change. And this three note sequence um, is very cool. If you can maintain that pattern all the way through, the result is a very cool sort of melodic phrase. I'm gonna bring it back up to 90 BPM and show you how this sounds on a faster tempo. Check it out. Pretty cool, right? So again, here's what's happening. I'm playing, I'm playing uh, the C major scale, ascending and descending. But what's happening is I am is as I'm approaching each note from above, a scale tone above, a scale tone below, and then the note. Now the first time I went through this, I was leaving a rest on the fourth beat of my phrase. But on this particular exercise, the final phase of this exercise, I take those rests away and I'm playing a three note pattern over a four note rhythmic grid. So I get this cool sequence, this very cool melodic sequence happening over the grid. Now that's cool. But there's something else that we can do with this. Um, once you get comfortable with the way that this sequence sounds, you can change where you start the pattern in the bar. Let's say I want to displace this whole thing, this whole exercise, by an eighth note. Now, if you've seen any of the courses that I've done on Scott's Bass Lessons, you know I'm all about displacing lines. So this is a very cool exercise to allow you to do that. And then you can hear all these accents in a completely different way because we're still taking a three-note phrase and playing it over a four-note rhythmic grid. So already the result is going to be very interesting. But now what we do is we take that entire idea and shift it by an eighth note. So if I'm starting right on the downbeat for the first part of the exercise, then what I'll do is now I'll shift to the and of one, right? So one, two, three, four. one and two and three and four and one and two. So I'm starting on the and of one and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. I'll bring this back down to 70 BPM, and then I'll play the exercise. All right, and a one is now set to 70 BPM. Once again, beats one and three are turned off. And, uh, and here's what the exercise sounds like now when I start it on the end of one. Check it out. One, two, three, four. One. Right on the downbeat. One. Two. I'll play it again. One. And that's that, my friends and neighbors. Um, I'm gonna leave it there. You know, the other thing that you can do uh, is take this same exercise through all of the shapes that we talked about in the previous lesson. If you haven't seen that video, it's right up there. Um, on, on that video, I'm talking about like all the different ways, all the different shapes that we can use to play the major scale. And of course, you can do this with minor scales, with all the modes, possibilities are endless and will keep you busy for the rest of your life but that's what I love about these exercises there's always room to improve there's always something else that you can try and uh, I suggest you go through as many of these as you possibly can play the major scale play the minor scale 
play the modes of the major scale, and try to use this sequence, maybe shift it by an eighth note, or maybe even by a sixteenth note, um, and take note of the results. If you like it, then maybe, that, maybe that's something that you can add to your vocabulary. If you don't like it, you don't have to add it. If it doesn't speak to you, then it's not for you. That's what I say about all these exercises. If you like them, then they're yours. If you don't like them, learn to play them at least. But then, if they're not speaking to you, then they're not for you. But at least learn them. And I'm going to leave it at that. My friends and neighbors, um, do me a favor. If you like this video, please do click like, share the video, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and, um, and donate to, to the channel if you are in a position to do so. I will leave a link in the description box that will allow you to do that. And you can also join the channel for five simple dollars. All of the above helps me out in a huge way and it really keeps this channel going. And I will leave it there, my friends and neighbors. Um, I will see you in the next video soon. And until then, peace and love.